Right now on the National Weather Desk, wild weather. Oh my God. From tornadoes to flooding, spring storms leave a path of destruction across many states. I've never seen a tornado hit Port Arthur before. We have a team of reporters and meteorologists covering the cleanup and recovery. This is absolutely amazing. I've never seen this before in our region. Also, why warning sirens didn't go off during a tornado outbreak last week. Soon, West Union will have two working sirens. How you can grow azaleas like they do at the Augusta National Golf Club. The beauty of it is that nature has already instructed the azalea how to take care of itself. And bee, leave it or not, we have the buzz on how a swarm of bees reacted to Monday's eclipse. From our nation's capital, this is the National Weather Desk. Good morning and welcome to the National Weather Desk. I'm meteorologist Steve Rudin from WJLA in Washington, D.C. It's been a wild couple of days around the world of weather. More than a dozen tornadoes reported across the country, along with drenching rain flooding many communities. Over the next 10 minutes, we'll show you how damage and recovery efforts in at least eight different states, from Texas to Pennsylvania, We'll start in Florida, where a tornado caused a line of destruction near St. Augustine. Although the twister damaged many homes and downed trees, St. John's County Fire and Rescue says there was no major structural damage. There was one minor injury, and that person drove themselves to the hospital. In Tallahassee, the story on Thursday was flooding. Torrential downpours swamped neighborhoods with more than 10 inches of rain washing away this road. Many streets, cars, and homes were underwater. No one was seriously injured. This man described what he saw after the storm cleared. When I came out of seeing that my car was on the water, man, I almost fainted because I couldn't believe it because it never did this before. It rained a lot, but it never did this before. So somebody, somebody was just nice enough to bring us a boat so we can get to and from the front door to the, to the road just to get out the house. A local high school also flooded. The principal said there was about an inch of rain or water in many classrooms. Flooding came just day after three tornadoes touched down to the Florida Panhandle. Two people in Pensacola area, a third near Santa Rosa. Estimated winds for all three twisters were between 105 and 110 miles per hour. Severe weather moved east, causing damage in South Carolina. Strong winds partially blew off the roof of this hotel in Myrtle Beach. The building was under construction for repairs when it all happened. Authorities said the property did not have an active business license, but there were guests that were staying there. Thankfully, no injuries were reported. Flooding was a major problem overnight in West Virginia. This morning, many in Charleston area are waking up to flooded roads. Some are impassable. Flood alerts will remain in effect until tomorrow morning. Dave Benton from our station in Charleston has more. This is absolutely amazing. I've never seen this before in our region. This is on I-64. The eastbound lane's completely covered with water. This is a rare sight. Check out this. You can actually hear the water rushing through this person's yard. And you can see how it's coming up quickly to the base of that car and on down the road. Now over in Dunbar, this is Rock Solana Road. You see a couple cars driving right through the water. Ooh, be careful. Yeah, uh, well, luckily I think they're okay, but they chanced it, and that's what first responders tell us not to do. And this next clip is from Kanawha County. You can see this, wow. The water is moving so rapidly. The person took this from the porch, it looks like, and you can see all the debris moving very quickly right there in front of their house. It's a similar story in western Pennsylvania around the Pittsburgh area. This video shows water rushing into an auto repair shop. Members of Pittsburgh's Swift Water Team rushed to rescue a person by boat. They were in a car that was sinking in rising water. A line of severe storms moved through Texas early Wednesday morning. A few hours later, communities in East Texas were assessing the damage. A tornado with winds of 120 miles per hour touched down. The city of Port Arthur, about 90 miles east of Houston, was hit hard. We have two reports, starting with reporter Maya Caleb. I've never seen a tornado hit Port Arthur before. It looked like somebody came in there with a bomb and it, it blew the top. It, it went up to the top and to the left. Ricky Guillory lives one street over from the damaged home and says the family is lucky to be alive. There was people that were sleeping in that house, you know, and they could have been gone. The tornado left behind a path of destruction. And I look and I seen a, a telephone wire down. 
And then I look, I see this tree that fell from the right, the left side, all the way to the right side. Despite the damage, no lives were lost in this catastrophic weather event. It's hard to believe such a beautiful day came after significant flooding the day before, destroying homes and closing roads and businesses. We have a lot of businesses here in, in the city that was impacted, some that will be closed for several weeks, if not months. Now that the rain has stopped and the water is receding, people are cleaning up the mess left behind. And at the Kirbyville auction barn, only puddles remain, but water was up to the necks of horses as they were being rescued. Luckily, owner Jeff McElroy says all animals were saved. Now it's just a matter of, uh, of getting dirty and getting it all out of here because everything inside, like I said, chin deep inside, all the records, any paperwork, all the computers, all our scales are, are shot. We'll have to redo all that. And all this debris you're looking at here just washed up from the road. So it's just a matter of clean up. Mayor Frank George says there were about 50 homes that flooded inside and outside of the city limits. But it was up here almost over your knees. That's when we started pulling stuff out this morning and trying to start over. Cleanup also continues this morning in Alabama after several tornadoes Wednesday. This is the town of Chinchilla, about 30 miles northwest of Mobile. The EF1 tornado left a trail of destruction, ripping the roof off at least one home and snapping large tree limbs. No injuries were reported. This was the scene from Slidell, Louisiana, about 30 miles north of New Orleans. A tornado ripped through the area Wednesday morning, bringing many injuries. Cleanup and recovery efforts continue. The National Weather Service says the EF2 tornado, with winds estimated at 120 miles per hour, left a path of destruction nearly 10 miles long. Slidell's mayor said the town has not seen this much damage since Hurricane Katrina, and that was back in 2005. And this was the scene near Jackson, Mississippi, after a tornado touched down there, leaving at least one person dead. A nearby, in nearby Hines County, cleanup is underway after major storms to, to, through, tore through the area. Michaela Franklin spoke with survivors as they began a long cleanup and recovery process. Usually the saying goes, the calm before the storm. But that wasn't the case in rural Hines County. If it wasn't a tornado, it was sure to one. Lanise Strong is convinced the worst of Mother Nature came through her front yard in Pocahontas. People always say it sound like a freight train coming. I didn't hear that part, but I knew it was just time to move. Strong and her husband spent the night going in and out of their safe place, only to wake up to their front yard in shambles. Her deck split in half and her pond, well, it's more like a lake. It's a mess, but we're blessed. Thankfully, we're blessed. It had a, if the wind had carried it the other way, it would have hit the house. So we're fortunate, very fortunate. The damage was widespread in this part of Hines County. It's in a turmoil right now. Uh, coming over here, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, you crossed a lot of limbs and trees down. Highway 49 was shut down for over 10 hours. Drivers of two big rigs didn't want to go on camera, but they told 16 WAPT News they had been stuck there since 9.30 p.m. Tuesday. The highway, a main point of travel for people in the Delta. You got to meander through a lot of traffic and uh, road debris and things of that nature. So it's uh, it's pretty bad. The cleanup certainly won't happen overnight, but the people in Pocahontas know what they're up against. And now the cleanup starts. Warming Earth temperatures could impact the ability to learn about the universe. Space rocks, otherwise known as meteorites, have been found by scientists on the icy plains of Antarctica, helping to better understand the solar system. But a new study says melting ice caps are presenting a threat. With warming climate, rocks are sinking into the ice, making it harder for scientists to find. And coming up on the National Weather Desk, we take you behind the scenes at a local National Weather Service office to find out how weather warnings are created and posted for your area. And hurricane season is just 50 days away. We'll look how some parts of the country are already starting to prepare.
I'm meteorologist Charlie Lopresti with Look at the Northeast. We have some mild conditions returning to the Northeast today, but more wet weather returns as well. We're in the 50s and 60s for highs. Here's the wet weather during the morning hours. That's 8, 9 o'clock in the morning. This moves out. Strongest winds will be moving out during the morning hours as well, and there probably will be at least some sunny breaks during the afternoon. Now the problem Saturday, we have this big upper low that's going to hang out over us. Temperatures will be a little bit cooler, running the 40s and 50s. Brighter skies return on Sunday. I'm Chief Meteorologist Gerard Bailey. Here's a look at the Mid-Atlantic region. We do have a chance for a few more showers this afternoon. Also, some pretty windy conditions with winds gusting 40 miles per hour. Overall, the activity on the radar is not going to be as intense, so not everyone is going to see the rainfall today. It looks like we're nice and dry as we head into Saturday. Our temperatures will take a little bit of a dip. We'll be in the mid to upper 60s on Friday. As we move into Saturday, though, still in the mid-60s. I'm meteorologist Vetus Reed. Here's a look at your southeast forecast highs for the day. Nashville, 66 degrees. Birmingham, 70. Tupelo looking at 70 degrees. Mobile, 77. Charleston, 75. 69 in Raleigh. Still holding in the upper 70s in Tampa. 82 West Palm. We did get that front that pushed through, uh, giving some showers and thunderstorms across the south, causing some damage. But now things are quieting down. We still have some remaining showers that are going to push through eastern Tennessee and parts of North Carolina and Virginia on the back edge of that low. But we'll get some clearing through the weekend. Watching the National Weather Desk. And welcome back. Tornado, tornado sirens are an important tool to help stay safe during severe weather. When a tornado struck near Cincinnati, Ohio last week, warning sirens failed to run. As Paige Barnes explains, the county is working to resolve the issue to make sure it doesn't happen again. It took a tornado and thousands of dollars in damages for leaders in Adams County to look into their warning sirens. When it came down to it, the sheriff's office blamed the villages for not keeping their sirens in good working order. The villages blamed the county dispatch for the system being down. The county EMA says it has no role in the warnings, and county commissioners say it's not under their control either. Kerry Hess finally heard the sound he had hoped would have gone off last week. Do you hear the sirens? Yes, yes I did. And how long did it last? Um, I don't know, about a minute or so. It was loud and... It was, it was, I thought tornado was coming. Adams County Chief Deputy Sheriff Bob Rebush says the test was a success, with the exception of one in Peebles. But it did work after being turned on manually. One of West Union's sirens is in need of repairs, but they knew that going into today's test. West Union's mayor is relieved to have a working siren. I was happy knowing that it works. Chief Deputy Sheriff Rebush says the call center is working swiftly to get a mobile alert system set up. I'm glad that the people at dispatch were able to fix whatever was wrong and we can go on and move forward. Hurricanes can happen during any month of the year, but in 2024, the hurricane season officially begins in 50 days from today. And it could be one of the busiest on record. Colorado State University is forecasting 11 storms, about 50% more than an average year. That is one of many reasons why officials in South Carolina say it's never too soon to prepare. Michael Owen has more. The most important thing is that regardless of predictions, we all have a responsibility as a coastal community to stay hurricane prepared. So the best thing you can do is just start thinking about preparedness. It's definitely not too early to think about that. Spring is a great time to start uh, making your plan. Hurricane evacuation zones are based off of storm surge potential and storm surge is often the deadliest part of any of these tropical systems. So we want people to be aware that, hey, 
There are some new updates for this hurricane season. Also, map out multiple evacuation routes now because you may not be able to leave the same way in every storm. But in case you have to stay, you should make sure your home is as safe as possible. Check in on your roof, places where maybe you can reinforce windows, doors, check for leaks and that kind of thing. Um, certainly start to mitigate any um, loose limbs or dangerous trees on your property. It's also recommended that you have a hurricane kit with a minimum of three days worth of supplies that includes things like water, non-perishable food, pet supplies, flashlights, and batteries. First 72 are on you. We need you all to have a kit for at least three days because after that we believe that we'd be able to get outside resources into the county to start helping people restock. Ever wonder how severe weather warnings are created and posted? We're going to lift the curtain and take you behind the scenes at a local National Weather Service office. Ryan Morano shows us how the NWS meteorologists take all sorts of data and turn it into severe weather watches, advisories, and warnings. Have you ever wondered how we meteorologists show you the future with forecasts, clouds, and rain as storms come barreling through your area? Well, it has to do with how we forecast with calculations. Just like any other math problem, we're able to calculate different things in the atmosphere, but these are very complex equations, very hard to solve. These are what we call nonlinear equations. That means we really can't keep track of everything. There's just so much that's changing, so we need to simplify them or parameterize them, kind of cut things out when things become necessary so this can actually give us an exact number that we're able to show on the map well how do we actually put it on the map it works like a grid like system across the world you have different grids different points for each location so firstly we go to the first point we solve some of those equations and then it actually gets output to the next point as it works downstream and so on and so forth until we're able to get enough on the map to show you where that rain will be the Masters Golf Tournament continues today. If you've seen some of the aerial views at Augusta National and were inspired about maybe planting some azaleas, you're now in luck. Emily Gracie got the dirt on how the experts prepare the course. You need to go out and get yourself a beautiful evergreen azalea, which will keep its leaves throughout the year. And then there are the deciduous azaleas, all that means is that it loses its leaves during the very cold season. So depending on your climate, you will find the appropriate type of azalea at your garden center because trust me, they're not going to sell you the type of azalea that is going to die because then you're going to take it back. But you don't have to do a lot for azaleas. I mean, even if you're at the golf course, they have to both really minding the bow so that they're in perfect shape. But the beauty of it is that nature has already instructed the azalea how to take care of itself. As long as you give it the proper sun exposure, which is morning sun, afternoon shade, make sure that it's acidic soil environment. Make sure that you don't allow that soil with your finger to get parched and dry. Azaleas like to be a little, you know, a little humid, a little moist. Keep it that way. And you will be the proud parent of an azalea plant. And maybe you'll rival the masters one day. If you're going to plant something else that you want your yard to look like Augusta National, what's another plant you should throw in there for that bright, beautiful look? When you choose a plant to go with your azalea garden, make sure that it's one that has similar needs. And you can usually read the tags on the plants. And here's another secret. When you're in a garden center, usually they classify the plants that are shade plants and they have them together under a canopy so that they don't die while they're, while they're waiting for their new home. And the stem lily plants are usually out. So it kind of makes it easy for newbies to kind of take a look and see if this plant will look great with the azalea. Just make sure that it has similar soil needs. To learn more about azaleas, gardening, and all things spring, head over to our YouTube page. You can find the video in the spring playlist. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe to the National Weather Desk. It's been four days and we're still talking about Monday's eclipse. A viewer in Arkansas sent video of bees in the path of totality to meteorologist James Bryan in Little Rock. As you will see, the bees were acting a little bit different. During the eclipse on Monday, we got several reports of bees doing crazy things. And there was a group of boaters in the middle of Lake Washita in western Arkansas that captured a swarm of bees descending 
on their group of boats. Video from Jeremiah Altman's, again, in Lake Washita in western Arkansas. Looks like thousands of them swarming their boats. Everybody remaining pretty calm. And the eclipse, of course, was amazing. This was about one-eighth of the way into a partial eclipse. And this was in the path of totality. And the bees were doing some strange things. What a sight to see. And check out this weather picture a viewer sent to meteorologist Katie Morgan in Nashville, Tennessee. Those streaks you see in the distance are called Virga or rain that's falling from the clouds but evaporating before it reaches the ground. Sometimes shafts of Virga may produce a microburst. As we go to break, a time lapse look at the sunset over Traverse City, Michigan from meteorologist Joe Charlevoix's Facebook page. If you look carefully, you can see Jupiter and the crescent moon. Well, a very good Friday morning, everyone. I'm meteorologist Andrew Buck Michael. What a difference we have across different parts of the Midwest today. A lot of sunshine across the plains, mild temperatures, chilly, wet, and windy, though, for the Ohio Valley and the uh, eastern Great Lakes as we continue on into tomorrow. Sunshine's coming out across most of the Midwest tomorrow, and temperatures warming up. Look at all the 80s we've got. And by the time that we get to your Sunday, we crank up the temperatures into the 80s and 70s almost all across the Midwest. Good Friday morning to you, meteorologist Chris Suche. Look at our forecast today across the region, starting off with those cool temperatures. Beautiful for the afternoon with easy to take humidity levels, a little on the gusty side in Texas with the wind, 70s and 80s for high temperatures. Here's Saturday, another real good looking day. Cool in the morning, 50s and 60s. And then the afternoon, we'll see 70s and 80s with mostly partly sunny skies. Six to 10 day outlook is above normal on rainfall and it is warmer than normal with the temperatures. Good morning, I'm meteorologist Rebecca Stevenson. Here's what's happening across the West. While we've had cooling in the Pacific Northwest with more clouds, we're gonna to start to dry out today, but we have rain tracking down into some cooling for California, but still very warm across Arizona and New Mexico. And New Mexico is where we've got some critical fire weather conditions building up due to wind. Now, as we go to our next weather maker, it's going to be low pressure tracking down the California coast, eventually pushing in for the weekend for rain and mountain snow. That's that's the scene from here. Welcome back. We all know when the sun is out, sunscreen is a must. But what about when the skies are cloudy or overcast? Do you still need sunscreen? Theron John has more. On an overcast day, you might think it's safe to skip the sunscreen. But according to the American Academy of Dermatology, on overcast days, 80% of the sun's UV rays can still make it through. That's why on spring days, when the clouds are out, you should still be in the habit of putting on sunscreen, a habit you should actually be in all year long. Now let's check to see the weather in cities across the country. We begin in Providence, Rhode Island, where wind will remain across the area. Wind advisories have been posted for gusts upwards of 50 miles per hour. Highs for the day in the upper 50s to lower 60s. And a look at my hometown, our nation's capital, after storms rolled across parts of the DMV early this morning. Lingering showers along with a few rumbles of thunder are possible this afternoon. Wind gusts in the mountains up to 50 miles per hour will make temperatures in the 60s feel extra chilly. And a look here at downtown Springfield, Illinois, where there is a light rain this morning. Skies become partly cloudy this afternoon as highs reach the middle 60s. Finally, the Bahamas with a look here at Governor's Harbor. Temperatures today around 80 degrees.
Thank you so much for looking in this morning. I'm glad you were able to join me. I'm meteorologist Steve Rudin from WJLA in Washington, D.C. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you back here on Monday.